Hello and welcome to Melt. I'm Suresh Venkat. We're talking corporate social responsibility on the show today, courtesy PNG India's flagship CSR initiative, Shiksha. Launched in 2005, Shiksha focuses on providing holistic education for underprivileged children. Last month, the program launched a new campaign that uses humor and specifically stand up comedy as a tool to spotlight the issue of learning gaps and conceptual understanding in children. Conceptualized by Leo Burnett, the film stars comic Rahul Dua. Let's first take a look at the film. Dimbu shifts class me palte. Favorite subject? Lowki. Lowki. Low low key. Subject. Wah! Kya badiya punchline. Sawal me aaya subject. Jawab me aayi subji. Itna random to kabhi kabhi OTP nahi aata jitni random sir ne baat kar di. Aur ye to kuch bhi nahi Rani bahut tej hai. अच्छा ये बताइए अगर टू और वन ट्वेंटी वन होता है तो वन और वन कितना होता है ट्वेंटी वन होगा ना कोई आज के बाद ग्यारह हजार का शकन न डाले सब वन टी वन हजार का डालेंगे क्यों अंकल जी आपको वैसे देख के लगता नहीं आप शकन डालने में ज्यादा विश्वास रखते हो अच्छा बच्चे छोटे नहीं है चौथी या पांचवी क्लास के एटलीस्ट पर पढ़ने का लेवल देख लो फर्स्ट या सेकेंड क्लास का लाइसेंस दे रखा जहाज चलाने का पर जहाज में बैठ के पूछ रहे हैं गेयर कहां से लगता है <laughs> मजाक नहीं लर्निंग गैप है ये खुद का बच्चा होता तो हंसते क्या नहीं ना समझाते सिखाते सपोर्ट करते हैं कुछ लोग यही कर रहे हैं पीएनजी इंडिया एनजीओ पार्टनर्स के साथ देश भर में स्पेशल रेमिडियल लर्निंग लैब चला रहा है To know more, we are in conversation today with Abhishek Desai, VP of Brand Operations and Category Leader Grooming at PNG India. What was the inspiration behind this campaign? How will the campaign be rolled out? And what are PNG's expectations? Let's find out as we get ready to melt with Abhishek Desai. Hi Abhishek, welcome to Melt. So let's start with the basics. What's the latest campaign all about? Well, the new Shiksha campaign, the PNG Shiksha campaign is about our ability to bridge learning gaps, right? Um, there was a study done by ASER in 2021 which said that more than half uh, of the primary school students have some of form of learning gap. Learning gap is defined as the gap between what your expected learning should be at a particular grade versus what actually it is. And this gap can, uh, it's like I said, more than 50%, so more than 6 crore uh, people, more, more than 6 crore children are facing this. So our objective was to bring awareness about this learning gap so that people can take action, take collective action towards it. And we believe the first step of taking action is to become aware of it. Now, Abhishek, obviously humor and comedy are, 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 are well-known tools in marketing and advertising. But we haven't really heard that much about stand-up comedy being used in a campaign. Yeah. How did you lock into that idea of stand-up comedy for the Shiksha campaign? Yeah, so like you said, humor is a great tool to engage with consumers. But at the same time, uh, it needs to be dealt with a lot of care. As we were going through, as we were working on this campaign, we were shown a video of a, of a child where he says something funny and uh, people laughed. And then this question was posed back to us saying, would you laugh it was, if it was your own child? And it delivered a certain gut punch to a lot of us. And like you were saying earlier, that you and you felt this when you saw the film. Yeah. So that's where we saw that in today's world and relating it back to today's audience, we saw humor to play a role, but the, the, intent, the intent was not to stop at humor, but to actually transition and make people aware about the learning gap. 
Okay. In fact, actually, I'll tell you share one something interesting. There was this uh, video of a child who incorrectly answered a question to a journalist, and uh, according to Forbes, it became one of the top ten memes in the country. Mm -hmm. Right. So, somebody's entertainment could be someone else's crisis, and that's what we are trying to bring to attention uh, mm -hmm. with this film. What's the call to action of this film? What 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 do you want your viewer to do after watching this film and presumably being moved by it? So the first step, like I said, is us for us to be, make people aware about it because not everybody acknowledges that there is a learning gap. Mm -hmm. It often leads to mockery, to ridicule, like we were talking about the example of memes, and that actually has a worse impact on the children. And in today's world, where anything can go viral, mm -hmm. uh, it can have a, even a larger impact. So the first step is for consumers, for everybody, for people to become aware for them to and then to take action action as a parent or action as for children around them also we also provided many tools like we have a uh, on our shik png shiksha website we have a tool where people can take a test and identify if there are learning gaps mm -hmm. and png works then with our ngo partners to bridge this gaps on ground through multiple programs mm -hmm. and how can a customer participate in this these programs for instance yeah so like i said the first step is for a customer is they can actually Take a learning test for people who they know are for children who they know around them. Yeah. Second, they can all take collective action in terms of ensuring that the right ways, like they can use the MindSpark tool that we use mm -hmm. to bridge that gap, mm -hmm. or they can find an alternative tools. Okay. Right. So first, become aware, and second is to take action. Right. And typically, how do you track a campaign like this? How do you track the responses to a campaign? Is it a multi-stage tracking? Is it an outcome tracking? How do you do it? Yeah. So it is. Uh, the reach and impact that we are able to create through the program and the number of conversations that we'll have about it because like i was sharing the intent is to create awareness about the learning gap mm -hmm. and more and more people talking about it is a step in that as a step in that direction we obviously measure the impact of the program on how much we are able to bridge the learning gaps also right so that's an ongoing exercise that we do year on year to that's a complex outcome it's an on ground outcome it's not easy to map it I is not imagine. easy to map right and but that's exactly what PNG Shiksha has always stood for, right? It is not just about raising awareness, but mm -hmm. it is also about taking action. Mm -hmm. We, it's been our flagship program since 2005, uh, and it's been 19 years. We have been, we are in the process of impacting 45 lakh children in a positive way. Uh, I myself ran, uh, was part of this program for the first time way back in 2007 when I just walked into the office and Shiksha was one of the first programs I worked on. Mm -hmm. And wow, it was such a matter of pride to be able to make a difference while you're sitting in a corporate office, but being able to make a difference on the ground. It, for me, it was a big uh, factor for me to probably stay along in the company for such a long time. So you've seen this campaign for the last 17, 18 years. I've seen this campaign, years. yeah. Either as part of the campaign or slightly from a distance, but I've seen it for a long time. How's it changed over this time? <laughs> Firstly, by the way, before I answer that question, it's uh, many people in PNG would have seen it for so many years. And if you walk around on the floors of the office, you'll sense a sense of pride that we have been part of this Shiksha program. Mm -hmm. How it has evolved? I think it has evolved keeping in keeping uh, in in pace with what the what today's world, what the world needs. So when we started the program, it was all about setting up physical infrastructure, about setting up schools. And for the first many years, we were helping. Uh, along with our NGO partners, construct schools and construct physical infrastructure to provide that education. Mm -hmm. But over a period of time, the access to education has to be as a large, to a large extent has already been resolved. But the learning outcomes have not kept pace with it. Right? Uh, I was sharing with you earlier that about 57% uh, children or grade five children are not able to read grade two text. Uh, there was another study which showed that. 25% of teens uh, cannot read fluently. Uh, more than half of them are not able to do basic divisions. So there is clearly a learning gap and it's not just a gap. I think when you look at this entire scale at the, of the country, it's a learning crisis. So it, it started from setting up infrastructure and now it has moved into bridging the learning gap. Abhishek, with this particular campaign, was it designed with a particular target audience in mind? And who is that? Actually, this is for everyone. Right? Because like I said, this is a much larger program. When you have more than half the children facing this problem, it is not dedicated to any specific audience. It could be across. It will be across, actually. Mm -hmm. Of course, our on-ground support is towards, more peop towards people who are the underserved communities. But the learning gap does exist amongst communities which also have help coming their way. And that's why the intent is to build awareness across all sets of consumers. That brings me to my next question. Now, the stereotypical thought, I would imagine that Something like stand-up comedy is an urban phenomenon, appeals to people like you and me who live in big cities. But 
you say the campaign is for everybody. So how does this idea translate into your non-urban markets, for instance? So firstly, humor is a tool which has uh, stood the test of time, right? It's urban, non-urban, rural, urban, it works non everywhere. Today's world, you go and meet people in rural areas, they're also hooked on to Instagram videos, which are funny and which are humorous, right? So as a tool, it caters to everybody. So we don't think there is anything urban or rural about it. We believe it caters to everybody. In fact, it is a unifying factor. We are able to get everybody's attention by using humor as a tool. But like I said, more importantly, we need to ha handle it with care. And that's why the transition from humor to a punch. Right? And humor is the way, in, but the focus is on driving awareness about the learning gaps. Tell us about demographics. Not all your target audience, not all of them are going to speak and understand Hindi, for instance. How do you work with different demographics with this campaign? Yeah, we create our programs in different languages. So while we are here and that's why you're seeing bulk of it in Hindi, this program is taken in regional languages as we go into different states in the country. Mm -hmm. The intent, like we always believe this, we need to be inclusive, we need to have it for everybody and we need to do it in a way people understand and language being one of the most critical ways to do it. Now let's get to the mechanics of the media mix of this campaign. We understand the importance of the cause, we understand the need for awareness and the call to action, but the film also has to reach a large number of people. So what's your media mix strategy for this campaign? We believe when we are catering to such a broad audience, every platform has its role to play. And that's why we'll have a multi-platform, uh, multimedia mix uh, that will come through over, the period of, over a period of time as the program goes live. We'll also work with a lot of advocates or key opinion leaders right, to take this message forward. And we believe that in today's world, their voice makes a very big difference in our ability to connect with uh, people. So it is not just multiple media, it's also multiple voices through which will take this uh, message to people. And how do you evaluate traditional media, by which I mean uh, traditional print, traditional outdoor, traditional TV, versus newer age digital tools like Instagram and others? How would you split your sort of mind space and wallet share across those two? So it goes back to the audience we are trying to target. The end goal, for irrespective of the medium, is to drive the end measures that we are looking for, right? Which is to drive conversations and drive awareness about this message. Now, stand-up comedy in itself is an experience that people want to go to, right? Yeah. And the actor in your film is obviously a very qualified stand-up comedian. Any plans for taking this on ground and having an actual stand-up show in which the show perhaps is interrupted by a serious message, something like that. Anything, any activation plans on that front? That's an interesting question. But like I said, the larger intent of this is to not take the humor forward, but mm -hmm. to take the message forward. There are multiple ways we'll take this forward. The stand-up comedy being one of those ways, which is what you've seen right now. But as the campaign evolves, we'll have different ways we'll bring this message across on different platforms. And Shiksha is a long-running campaign since 2005. In your view, Abhishek, what is the secret to its longevity? Because I ask you this because we see campaigns launched by brands and by corporates. It launches, runs for a few years, then perhaps the chief executive or somebody else has a change of heart and they pursue an equally worthy cause but a different cause. So there is a disruption. But this has continued, like you said, for 17, 18 years on the trot. Yeah. What's the secret behind this sustenance <laughs> of this campaign? You know, I think that goes back to the strength we have as a company, as PNG, which is we get into something, we do it for the long term. Uh, the number of marketers, the number of business leaders that have been associated or Shiksha is huge. But there's a common running ethos, there's a common run, running sense of pride in this program that has been passed generation to generation. Mm -hmm. And that to me is the secret sauce, right? Which is why we are able to continue to drive this program and take it to the next level every year. In 2014, CSR became a legal mandate for businesses in India with a 2% rule and all that. Did this have any impact on the Shiksha campaign because you ran it before and after the 2014 uh, legislation? Absolutely. Like you said, uh, we started Shiksha much before the CSR uh, Act came into place. We started this program in 2005. It's been 19 years. Though the CSR Act that happened in 2014, it did help us mm -hmm. by strengthening our execution muscles. Uh, in terms of the quantity of impact that we could deliver, we could actually take it much broader as that entire setup became available to us. So the program did help, but we were at it much earlier before the program. right? And it is not just about quantity. right? If I go into quality, it is actually very fascinating. I myself visited quite a few of those schools, quite a few of these MindSpark labs. And it's fascinating the journey that children go through when they are exposed to this kind of aid coming their way. Uh, I'll give you the example of uh, Divya, who's an eighth grader from Sangli in Maharashtra. 
So she used to have gaps on English, math, and Marathi, and uh, she started taking uh, this the the support that we are providing with MindSpark, and it's made some huge difference in her life, mm -hmm. in uh, in her own confidence. Mm -hmm. So it's a family of farmers, but education is important to the family. Uh, she got so excited about it. Even over her vacations, she started attending those those classes because she was learning, and. Uh, to give you an example, in her case, she started the first time she took the test. I was tell, telling about the baseline test. Yeah. In the first time she took the test, she was at uh, level 4. Today, she is at level 7.5, which is at par with where she needs to be. Mm. So, of course, it has not just improved her uh, learning ability, but it has significantly improved her confidence also. She wants to become a police officer and she's now beaming with, with confidence that she'll be able to do that. Okay. Right? So, stories like this make a huge impact to us. Which also goes back to the earlier question of secret sauce. When you see that impact on so ground, it's not just the big numbers and the statistics. Not just the big numbers. It you is see, the anecdotes and the stories. You see the that anecdotes. You're... You see the stories. So many of us have been to these programs ourselves. I recently took my team uh, where we visited one of the Shiksha schools where uh, the school was in the early days. The school was created. Now with MindSpark, we are bridging the learning gaps. And wow, we also met some uh, students who started with Shiksha many years back. And they've come a long way thanks to Shiksha. And that is the binding force that this organization has a lot of pride in. Now, the PNG Shiksha website and almost all your brand SKUs say that buying the brand means the consumers automatically supported PNG Shiksha. So, is this a brand differentiator? Is this a purchase consideration? Would a consumer say, okay, between all these brands that I can buy, this one I can do a little social good with as well? Yeah, it is not about purchase. It is we, we are listing the brands which are associated with Shiksha. But it is more about the impact that we create. And you will see in every communication that we take, we are focused so much on impact, focused so much on first driving awareness and also sharing where we have the possibility to share the on-ground impact we are making. Of course, it's not easy to talk about the scale of on-ground impact that we are making. And that's why you will right now see the focus more on awareness. But that's what the end objective is. Abhishek, PNG continues to thrive on purpose and cause-based marketing. Now, the next question is personal. Does this need a particular kind of marketer? For want of a better word, not a ruthless capitalist <laughs> marketer. Maybe a conscious capitalist marketer. What kind of person does it need to run an initiative like this? We believe as marketers, we do have a responsibility. right? And that response, we also have certain power with the power of our brands. And if we can leverage that power to convert that into a responsibility and to drive action, we can make a big difference. And when you're hiring a member of your team, how do you assess if they have this <laughs> sort of let's say, ideology fit with PNG's uh, values? You know, one thing we have learned over the years is when you're in a certain ecosystem, you already start imbibing those values. And over a period of time, when you see this happening around you, it is it percolates in the organization. So I don't think we have made a conscious effort to go and look out for marketers who have that bent. Mm -hmm. But because they have been part of this activity system and this ecosystem, which genuinely cares about uh, welfare of people, uh, in, of welfare of communities that we live and operate in. Uh, I think that has got inculcated into all of us. I can share my personal example, right? Nobody in my interview at PNG asked me anything about social causes. Mm -hmm. But when I joined the company, one of the first projects I worked on was Shiksha, right? So at an early age, at an age when I just started my corporate Maybe career. Maybe that was your initiation or your test to see, my to see whether probably. you have those values or not. <laughs> Absolutely. But and I think it's as human beings, when you see that impact happening on the ground, it's very difficult for it not to touch you, right? And because all of us have seen that impact on the ground, I think we all became uh, followers and fans of the program. Abhishek, your core role at PNG is to lead the grooming business and brand operations, if I'm right. Is working on CSR significantly different than pure play marketing those products and brands? I think different in the sense that it is also a unifying factor. I talked about it, I alluded about it earlier in the conversation. Uh, irrespective of which brand, which business people in PNG work on, they're all full of pride when it comes to Shiksha. So, every, and like I was saying, over 19 years, different marketers, different leaders have led this program. Mm -hmm. But it has unified all of us in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. uh, while sometimes we can be focused on our particular business, our particular brands, this Shiksha helps unify the entire force mm -hmm. in the company. Now, let me ask you a, the final question as a ruthless capitalist. Do you ever need to prove a correlation between the money, effort and resources you put into the Shiksha campaign and that translating into any actual sales of products? No. Absolutely no Absolutely. correlation. All right. 
On that note, Abhishek Desai, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you print. so much, Suresh. Now, time for creative picks. Is this a trailer, an ad, branded content, all of the above? Well, this spot for Amnesty International cleverly answers yes to all those questions. Starring Olivia Coleman and Adrian Lester, the spot highlights some of the key issues around human rights in the UK. Take a look. You used to be a lawyer, right? I need your help. Oh, I haven't practiced in years. Where's the baby? We can't stay here. It's making her sick. You are on the waiting list, I promise. OK, my advice... She's dead. I don't believe it. They're denying all responsibility. Hi, Mum. Hello. I need you to talk me out of something. I'm thinking of taking the council to court. You're wasting your time. She can breathe in that place. Well, what do you want me to say, Mary? There's nothing more I could have done. You could have moved them, but you left them there. There are so many kids like this. They come in, we treat them, and then they come right back. Or they don't. Are you ready to fight? I want justice. I care about these kids. I was one of them. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if people like you care about them. Until their lives matter to society, they're invisible. I know what you think when you look at me. She must have done something wrong. I ticked all the boxes. I tried to do everything right. It wasn't enough. This isn't drama. This is real life. Human rights in the UK are under threat. It's time to tune in. With that, it's a wrap on Melt today. Keep following Melt on social media. The handle is ready to melt, or simply log on to readytomelt.com. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Suvank on X. Till next week, goodbye. Thanks for watching.